Now most gaming PC videos on YouTube are for US priced PCs. In this video I cover an $800 Canadian gaming PC for my Canadian gamers out there. It features the Ryzen 5 2600 and RX 580 and can easily handle games at 1080p max settings with around 60fps. This is the hardware hub and let's get right into it. So before we start, I would like to quickly mention I have US and Canadian links down below so check those out if you're interested. But with that out of the way, let's get into the build itself. To start it off with the CPU, I went with the AMD Ryzen 5 2600 for $186. This is a 6 core 12 thread CPU that comes clocked at 3.4 GHz with a boost clock of 3.9 GHz. Even though this is a generation old, it can still easily game in all the latest titles and can do content creation tasks with ease as it has 12 threads. Like all Ryzen CPUs, it comes unlocked so you're able to overclock it to max out its potential. Now it did not go with the 3000 series Ryzen 5 3600 because the 2600 is noticeably cheaper. At this price point, the 2600 offers excellent bang for your buck. Now for the motherboard, I went with the Gigabyte B450M DS3H for $95. This is a mid-range MicroHX motherboard that has 4 RAM slots, 4 SATA 6 gigabyte per second ports, and an M.2 slot. One of the most important features that this has is the B450 chipset. This chipset allows you to overclock your Ryzen based CPU. Now this isn't the fanciest motherboard out there, but it can handle some decent overclocking, so it'll probably gonna hit maybe 4 GHz on this Ryzen CPU. Now like all AM4 motherboards, you can always add in another Ryzen CPU in here, so in the future if you want something like an 8 core uh, 3700X or maybe something from the 4000 series in the next generation, you can install it in this motherboard. But besides that, this is just another mid-range motherboard that has all the essentials. Now for the RAM, I went with the G-Skill Ripjaws 16GB set for $86. Now Ryzen and its Infinity Fabric really benefit from multi-channel and high frequency RAM, so it's nice to go with a kit like this which is dual channel and clocked at 3200MHz. 16GB is a sweet spot nowadays for gaming and it will allow you to multitask and do some moderate video editing. So this RAM set fits the needs of this PC. Now for the storage, I went with both an SSD and a hard drive. Now for the SSD, I went with the Team T5 Lite 240GB SSD for $40. Now SSDs are faster and more reliable than hard drives. Since they're faster, I highly recommend you install your OS and applications on here as it's going to make your PC seem faster since boot times and loading times are going to be much lower. The 240GB capacity is not the largest but you could probably fit at least one major game on here so if you have a game that you play a lot then you should install it on your SSD. Now with this SSD, I have the Western Digital Caviar Blue 1TB for $50. This is a pretty basic hard drive that spins at 7200 RPM and has 64 megabytes of cache. Now this is going to be your mass storage for this PC. So this is going to store all your games and large media files and it's going to do it at a very low price per gigabyte. So there's not much more to say about this, it's pretty much a very good bang for your buck storage device. Now for the graphics card, I went with the Sapphire RX 580 for $225. This comes clocked at 1257MHz out of the box with a boost clock of 1366MHz. Now Sapphire cards are definitely some of the nicest for overclocking as they're built well and have nice coolers. So if you have this card, you could probably push it at a decent overclock as well with decent temperatures. Now this also has 8GB of VRAM which will be more than enough for gaming at 1080p max settings in the latest games. Sapphire makes some of the best AMD GPUs and this is no exception. Now for the case, I went with the Deepcool Tesseract for $45. This is a mid-tower case that can support up to an ATX motherboard. It also has a lot of fan mounts and drive bays, so you can add in as many fans and drives as you want. Cable management will be okay as well since it does have a decent amount of room behind the motherboard, but it doesn't have anything like a PSU shroud. So while this does not have fancy features like a side panel window and a PSU shroud, it does have all the features that you need at a low price. Last but not least for the power supply, I went with the 550 watt Cooler Master Master Watt for $70. This is an 80 plus bronze rated PSU that is semi modular. Being semi-modular is nice as it allows you to remove extra cables and change cables out so you can install cables that have a certain color scheme in this PC. It's also important to note that this power supply has two 8 pins which is going to ensure that this PSU is compatible with most mid-range GPUs. Now this can support up to 550 watts of components so you do have some room to overclock and upgrade in the future. So altogether it's a great mid-range PSU. Now after seeing those parts you're probably wondering how will this PC perform? Well in the latest games it can max them out at 1080p with around 60fps. Of course there's some games that you're not going to hit 60fps or max them out, but you're going to get that with any PC at pretty much any resolution. 
even then this will provide a very good experience and it's probably going to be very good for people who are playing at 1080p. Now if you have any questions about this PC or PC building in general, please leave a comment down below. Also let me know if you want me to do more international PC builds like this in the future. I would also like to quickly mention I have links to everything in the description so check that out if you're interested. But yeah guys that's all for today, if you liked the video please be sure to hit the like button, if you didn't like it please dislike this video and subscribe for more content and I'll see you guys in the next one.